My boyfriend and his friends were brutally murdered, everybody in town can see how he died except me. Five days since my boyfriend had disappeared, kids I had barely spoken to were suddenly in my face, pretending to fucking care, but they weren't, slick. I saw their TikTok videos attempting to turn my boyfriend's disappearance into a glorified whodunit. I reported them of course, but they weren't going to stop. Ordinary strangers demanded to know every detail of our lives, claiming to be the ones who solved the case. It's always the girlfriend, someone commented, which garnered almost 3,000 likes. I don't think I can describe the hopelessness and rage I felt reading something like that and worse, that people agreed with them. Still though, I found comfort in the small things, such as Jordan's last ever text. Hey, meet me at 9? I've got a surprise for you. Days went by, and Rosie Carlyle suddenly erupted into screams in the middle of AP English. When I twisted around to look at her, her eyes rolling back to pearly whites, blood pooling from her nose, I felt phantom bugs filled my mouth. She stood there, rocking back and forth, twitching like she was having a seizure, before awareness bloomed into her expression. Jordan, Rosie spoke my boyfriend's name in a single shaky breath. She shook her head, her hands clawing at her hair. He's so cold. Rosie dropped to her knees, shivering. He's being dragged, and he's in so much pain. It's dark. It's so dark, and there's blood. Rosie started screaming again, and I was paralyzed, caught between wanting to know and not wanting to know. But Rosie wasn't the only one. Mr. Baker stopped his lecture abruptly. He blinked three times, before throwing himself out of the window, smacking straight onto solid concrete. Little kids started describing my friend's grisly deaths, and it was always the same. Cold. Dark. Pain. Somehow, the town was being haunted, polluted, by my dead boyfriend's memories, which led me back to where mine and Jordan's special place. Climbing up the metal prongs leading to our town's water tower, I forced open the door, and there was Jordan, lying face down on the surface. He looked so cold, like his soul was still in pain. I had come prepared, a butcher knife in my hand. Easing myself into the ice-cold water, I sliced into him, severing his head and limbs, letting ice-cold blood infuse gentle currents lapping around me. When I stepped in too deep, I was pulled under, water rushing into my mouth and ears, polluted with that night. Jordan's laughter was sweet, almost melodic. Come on Sarah, it's just a bit of fun. Breaking the surface, I cut into my own arms, letting my own blood seeping into the water, letting myself sink. If I died right there, my memories would join the endless swirling spiral beneath me. Sarah, get on the fucking bed. Lana, did you get the camera? Stop fucking crying. We're having fun. That TikTok comment was wrong. It's actually always the boyfriend.